Happy home soccer day. It's your soccer zombie Tom Franklin here coming to you from just north of City Park in downtown West St. Louis where these boys right here have returned home after a couple weeks on the road. We are hosting DC United tonight, a team that has, uh, well, they've seen better times. Uh, this is a winnable game for City, but uh, let's not just assume that. Uh, I'll get to that in just a little bit here, but uh, City coming off of a uh, couple of road games, two road draws, 2-2 um, at Austin uh, two weeks ago, and then uh, last week the 3-3 three three thriller against the LA Galaxy that I think we're just starting to uh, kind of come down to earth on even a week later. Uh, if you haven't checked my watch along video for that, so I'll link that uh, in this video and in the dot up in the corner up there. But uh, yeah, so coming into this one, good form. I mean, you don't score three goals against a good Galaxy team without being in good form. DC United today, who are struggling a little bit this year towards the bottom of the Eastern Conference. And uh, coming off a 3-1 to one beat down by Inter Messi, but they did draw on the road uh, their two games before. So they're, uh, they're still a team that could surprise, but I feel pretty good about our chances getting, uh, getting three points here at home. Uh, I feel like getting three points would be a reward, I think, for our good play so far. And, you know, in theory, on paper, this is a game that we should be winning. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Um, part of the reason is because DC United, their locker room more resembles a trauma ward in Stalingrad in 1943. Um, just look at these injuries here on your screen. Um, so many banged up bodies. So yeah, they, this is uh, surely, surely winnable. Uh, you're just too good to be true. Too good to be true, like a single Jewish doctor. It's gonna be interesting to see the return of Jared Stroud and Lucas Bartlett to St. Louis, of course, traded in the off season for uh, Chris Durkin, and I think Jared will get a good welcome here in St. Louis. He had his detractors while he was here, but uh, I mean, I think no, no one could disrespect Jared Stroud's effort, and hardworking types are beloved here in St. Louis, no matter what sport you're in. Yeah, real curious to see them back in action tonight, and uh, real curious to see what other fans uh, think of this game heading into it. Let's go. Last time I saw you, we were just about the only two people in Houston Hobby Airport. It was very creepy. The good news is we only need a draw. I had it picked as a 1-1 draw. Hello, darkness, my old friend. This, we got a few more people behind us here, so. A little better environment. Have you gotten over last week's game against the LA Anxiety? I'm in LA Galaxy. That was crazy. Um, we should have lost. We should have won. So I think in the end, you take a 3-3 tie, you take a point on the road. Galaxy's really good. Paint Sill is a killer striker, and he's going to score a lot of goals this year, especially with Ricky Pooch. Um, you know, if you listen to MLS and hear his name 4,000 times, uh, the two of them are going to hook up a lot. So to come out of Austin and L.A. with two points, I think we've got to not be greedy this year. Jared Stroud, Lucas Bartlett, return for DC United. Um, looking forward to seeing them. I never hated Stroud like a lot of people. I, I really hope that they get the ovations they deserve. They're an inaugural team player. They made tons of contributions, whether you like them or not. They're here from our first team. So hopefully the fans remember that part of it. Well, and Jared Stroud drove me nuts as, as well. <laughs> I think he drove everyone nuts at some point. But, you know, here in St. Louis, we love our hardworking players. We love our hardworking types. And Jared Stroud was one. So I'm also expecting a big applause for him tonight. We cheer every former Cardinal that comes back to the stadium. So Except Tino Martinez. Well, yeah, <laughs> minor details. But, yes, I think that Stroud, you know, for as frustrating as he was, he did a lot of great things for us. So, yes, he deserves an ovation. Score prediction tonight? I have 3-1. Three three I, I think with all the backups out, I think we're going to put up some goals. They sneak one in on the high press, but 
two pressing teams should be an entertaining game. I, you know, I'm gonna match that. I'm gonna go three. I was thinking three, one as well. I. Hello, darkness, my old friend. But let's go, city. Go, city. The march of the Open Cup. As the banners get into position, this is the third straight game that they have brought out these banners. They, they have uh, the winners uh, from the St. Louis City teams of the past. Because we honor history here in St. Louis. Don Garber doesn't care about history, but we do. So far, St. Louis has been knocking and knocking and knocking and knocking on the door. Just can't quite get a breakthrough. End of the first half score is 2-1 to one, DC United over St. Louis City SC and the team that was in LA last week has left. It's vanished in the last 10 minutes or so. DC has completely had the run of play after it looked promising for St. Louis. You heard me earlier saying that it you know, felt like a breakthrough was coming. But I think we're seeing a textbook example of why when St. Louis owns possession, it does not necessarily mean results. 56% uh, possession to St. Louis in the first half. I think the instant reply after Yarrow's goal took a lot of wind out of our sails. And uh, we've been, it, it, just, it just feels like we've been on a steady decline ever since. What's up, Patty? So yeah, hopefully better things here in the second half. Um, definitely not what we saw from the last 10 minutes from this team. Uh, even DC has an XG advantage according to FODMOP. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes in the second half. Uh, this team makes me drink. 53rd minute here in the second half, and the vibes in this place are just off. They're off. There is not the usual energy in the crowd. The team looks like a half step slow. Has Klaus always been this slow? I mean, it's not even just him, though. Something's off here. Oh, 
Jim and Tekki doing there? Explain. I got nothing. I don't know. I cannot recall the last time we had a shot on goal, but it's the 61st minute in the second half, and we just had one. Haven't had one all half long. I don't think he had any towards the end of the last half. Just dire. We're still here. We're still standing. 67th minute, and uh, player injured for DC gives me a chance to... Uh, Note that at this point, you have not seen many highlights in this half because I think DC is trying to strangle this game to death. I mean, I really can't say anything except these replacement refs are terrible. Uh, they've been really bad this game, and I've, and I've defended them. I, I don't think they've been... In some cases, they've been fine. In some cases, less than fine, but I think that's just refs in general. But they've been pretty bad this game. Just a lot of... A lot of stuff getting missed, a lot of fouls that aren't fouls, out-of-bounds calls that are wrong, you name it, basically. Uh, there's no one in this building that I think is particularly happy with these refs tonight, or just happy in general. Like, I'm probably coming through loud and clear because the vibes are off. The vibes are way off in here. All right, Klaus on the spot, chance to get back. Snide with his first goal of the season. Weird stutter snippy penalty kick after Cedio Bombay was fouled on the edge of the box. I think they reviewed it. They determined it was a penalty. And uh, we're back in this one, two to two. Finally, the vibes are back in this place. That was a uh, that was a dreadful 25 minutes or so. Chris Durkin just got a yellow card, continuing the tr tradition of a St. Louis player wearing number eight getting a uh, not a great yellow card. Of course, the other number eight, Jared Stroud, is in uniform tonight for D.C. And refs are losing control of this game here. There's some pushing and shoving at the edge of the box here. Sam and Klaus look like they're not happy campers. Berkey is telling Durkin to cool it off a little bit. Tension building up here in the 91st minute. 10 minutes of stoppage time. 2 2 game. Oh, what a save! What a save! Oh, Thorson had a chance there. Maybe could have done better, but good save. Oh, God, that was a chance! We dominated the first 25 minutes, but came away with nothing. We got a goal, gave it up in a minute. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, the first two-thirds of the second half was flat. Uh, it, it, it felt that DC was trying to strangle the game to death. Well, yeah, especially when they decided their best defense was flopping and taking 40 seconds on every play. Um, if this doesn't say pay the refs, I don't know what game we need to say it. And I'm not that guy that will just blame everything on the refs. I think fans are, and you know, and I think tonight 
they have a valid argument tonight. The refs did not have control of the game at all. Fouls that should not have been called. Fouls that weren't called that should have. And Bob Bob says there were eight yellow cards, but I think that's a little off. Like, I think you had, what, five in the final, t- you know, 15? Yeah, five in stoppage time, I think. And not to mention, I don't think four minutes of extra, extra stoppage time was even enough yeah. for all the flops. So, yeah, there you have it here from City Park and everyone leaving the... Uh, stadium today, they're talking about the refs, so it's not just me, it's, it's, they were terrible tonight, and I think DC fans, I'm really curious what DC fans think about these, uh, these refs tonight, because they just were bad for everyone tonight, it felt like, and I hate to be that guy, and, 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 and continuing to harp on it, but it's just, they were, they were just, it was just, wasn't very good. I mean, that's where the actual rest of the game itself, I mean, had a weird flow to it. You know, we look good at the, st- you know, St. Louis looked very strong at the start, faded in the, you know, second half of the first half, stumbled out of the gate in the second half. I mean, we got a gifted a penalty and, you know, Klaus converted. I mean, oh, that's fine, man. Um, yeah, just very, very frustrating uh, game here. And 2-2, I mean, so we got a point out of it and I got some posters out of it so that's nice but uh yeah just I I find it hard to even call this a lost opportunity because to be fair DC played well too I mean they are weirdly good on the road this year and they came into City Park and got a point I mean so you know credit to DC I mean they they did what they needed to do I think we haven't had a chance to really check out the underlying stats but fair play to them so we move on, and quick note on this channel, don't count on St. Louis City SC match day vlogs for the next two weeks, because I'm going to England this time next week. I am uh, doing a five-day speed run of English footy, uh, five games in five days that you can see on your screen right now. It's a trip of a lifetime, and obviously... Because I'm going to be in England, I really can't focus too much on St. Louis while I'm there. What do you think of the game tonight? Do you think St. Louis had a chance to get three points? Do you think that this game was completely muddied by the refs like I do? Um, leave a comment below. I'm sure you're frustrated about this game if you're a St. Louis fan. Maybe as a DC fan, you're a little frustrated too. Although, I think you should feel good about getting another road point in this league because those aren't the easiest to come by. So, and make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of uh, content and uh, let me know uh, what you think. But in the meantime, I'm your soccer zombie, Tom Franklin, walking in a dark alley in St. Louis. Stop, stop, stop!